uh, knows that world. He used to work for the FCC. He worked at the top of the FCC with the commissioners, um, not the present group of them, but he knows how the operation works, and, and he's in there doing a good job, and uh, we didn't go for a search. Let's, we have two comments here. First, Virgil in the front. I voted for the first option because it doesn't need to be a long, drawn-out, formal process, but I think there should be at least be a, a call for applicants. Okay, the uh, comment my, was he didn't think it would, should be a long, drawn-out process, but he thought, thought there should be a, uh, a search for candidates, and the comment behind him. Yeah, how about our hands of uh, uh, no opinion? I thought the uh, there's about 140 or 50 of you, and... Uh, about 70 of you voted, so I'll just subtract out and say 80 of you don't care. Is that fair? Um, and the, um, the process now, as I look at it, could take six months. Uh, if I were doing it, it would take six weeks, but um, there's a more formal group that's going to do uh, a, a more uh, thorough combing of the background, I guess. And uh, it, may, it may take that. I hopefully, I'm hopeful that they'll get it done much shorter. We have a comment in the back. It would seem to me, if you're the transparency party, that the idea of searching would be a much more transparent system than a small group of guys making an appointment of everybody. Yep, definitely. Okay, that is a sort of a summation of what other people have said. He said, if you're part of the transparency party it would be more appropriate to have a thorough search instead of putting in somebody that you're consider your buddy um, the person I want I wouldn't consider my buddy I kind of knew him a little bit uh, but it was because I evaluated his background and what he has done uh, I might think he's appropriate for that job we had another comment in the back <laughs> That, and his uh, comment was that you, if you make a, a search based on people you know, you, you might exclude qualified candidates and the appropriate person might be a she instead of a he. And let me assure you that um, one of the candidates that was uh, considered quite highly last time was a she. So uh, I believe, and, and the past president of the ARRL has been a woman, so... Uh, we appreciate women and they have a role to play, at least in my mind. Well, comment here. Is there a problem with giving the board the discretion to choose at, at the uh, appropriate time which uh, direction they want to go in? Uh, whether they want uh, a search committee or appointing uh, someone? Yes, I'll answer that by saying we made that decision and we voted to form a search committee. So uh, the question was, can you do that? The answer is yes, we already did it. Okay, let's go on to something else. Um, let's go on to the ARL ain't the only player in town anymore. There's a group of people, one of them who, I don't know, 30 or 40 years ago, somehow got 16 million what are called internet IP4 addresses. When you have a website, something like ARRL.org, the internet somehow takes the ARRL.org that you put in, looks it up in a table, and goes to some set of numbers like 12.642.38. These people, back when no one thought the internet was going to amount to anything, gathered up all the numbers that began with 44 decimal something else and there were 16 million of them. Last spring, summer, they sold 4 million of them, so they only have 12 million left. There are 700,000 people that have licenses in the U.S. I'd say maybe half of them are really still interested in ham radio. So with the 12 million left, there's probably only um, 36 of these addresses available for each of the hams. I actually know two people who have these addresses, so there's 
uh, still 11 million nine hundred and ninety nine whatever uh, thousand left so there's lots of these addresses left we don't know exactly how much money these people got for these addresses but based on the value of the internet addresses it appears to be in the order of a hundred million dollars now that's almost as much as many of you make in a year and I mean it's almost as much as I make in a year <clears throat> as long as you are confused about decimal points uh, but the nature of the organization and they're called amateur radio digital communications and they're the, the, the addresses were coupled to a group called AmpereNet, A-M-P-R-Net, and that's how you applied for them. When they sold the addresses off, if anybody lost one of the addresses that they sold off, they gave you another one. There's, you know, 12 million of them left. There was some criticism that, well, some guys in Germany are still using these numbers, and that, that's true, but the issue with the people in Germany using them they're using them in a completely closed system. They're not connected to the other, the real big worldwide internet. So on your own personal internet, you could use any numbers or letters or anything you want to uh, go back and forth between your addressees. So it looks like there's no damage done to hams, and particularly with 11,900,000 of these addresses left that they could give out. They have a stated objective of helping ham radio and uh, I'm on the outside of this group Th the then president of it was a fellow Brian Cantor WB6CYT and a major player was Phil Karn KA9Q who is reasonably well known in the technical community of amateur radio I met with them back in I don't know October or September or something like that and we had a reasonably good interchange. We kind of agree on things that ought to be done to improve ham radio. Our goals are sort of the same. Then what happened is Brian Cantor went and died a couple months ago. Um, I tr treated him as an interesting character. You look at somebody with uh, a long ponytail and earrings in his ears, and then when he talks, it's like this is a guy uh, who runs a, co a corporation. He, I mean, he talked business sense. He, he just sounded uh, level-headed, clear-thinking. Uh, not that length of hair is related to that in, in negatively in any way, but I was impressed with him, but unfortunately he passed away. Now Phil Karn is president. Phil and I think roughly the same in terms of what ought to be done. And their major goal is education. And what are we going to do? Uh, a quick comment? Yeah, I just was wondering, are you talking about IP addresses? Yeah. Yes, IP addresses is what they sold. So, um, back to, uh, to Phil and I have discussed things on the phone as what can they, what can the ARRL do coupled with them? What can they do independently? They don't exactly know which way to go. And some of the suggestions I made are, uh, or Phil and I have made, one of them is the ARRL Foundation gives out about 100 scholarships a, a year. 